How does the latest cybersecurity hack known as Mongo Bleed relate to the video game Rainbow Six? I am so glad you asked, let me tell you. Now, a lot of people forget that I started out as a cyber guy and I still do work in that area, namely Cybent or Cyber Intelligence Collection, so I can find people to, well, frankly, bomb. And uh, this new exploit called Mongo Bleed is kind of similar to the Heartbleed SSL bug. Um, if you're running MongoDB and you want to try the exploit, you can get it below. It's publicly available on GitHub. Uh, I have a link to it. Uh, what I love is that this exploit was dropped on Christmas Day. <laughs> like, man, like way to ruin every single network engineer's holiday. Now, if you're not technical and you're just watching this because you like my military and intelligence content, MongoDB is what's called a NoSQL database. What is a NoSQL database? I am so glad you asked. Let me tell you. So SQL means structured query language. Many relational databases are very structured, almost like a spreadsheet. I'm sure you've used a, a spreadsheet before. Now, a traditional relational database, let's say for an online bookstore, well, it feels like item, price, ISBN number. So here's three of my novels, which, by the way, you should be reading and you can get on Amazon.com. But um, so I got three novels here. What if I want to start selling T-shirts? Well, I've got a problem. Either I build a whole new table just for t-shirts, or I start adding like nonsense columns, like t-shirts don't have an ISBN number and books don't have t-shirt sizes. And, you know, you can see how if you're a company like Walmart or Amazon or eBay, and you sell thousands of different products with thousands of different features, this makes no sense, right? This database is going to get complex really quick. So MongoDB and other NoSQL databases solve this by using document-based storage. Instead of rigid rows and columns, each item is stored in a document, usually in a format called JSON. In MongoDB, it actually kind of looks like JSON. Uh, they call it BSON. It makes it very, very um, scalable, right? You don't need a new table or an extraneous column. You just add different documents. SQL databases force everything into the same shape, MongoDB lets the item describe itself, and that's actually going to lead into one of the reasons why this exploit is so dangerous. And actually, in a lot of ways, this exploit is like the contents of a wallet, uh, if you think of a wallet as a database, right? You know, I have a whole bunch of information in here. I got my credit cards, I got my, my gun permit, I got my, I got my cash. See, the, the big bills are on the outside. Here's what you need, just a couple of cards and your bankroll. See, keep the big bills on the outside. It's a five. <laughs> um, but I have a lot of different things that fit into this database. And this is actually a pretty good analogy. Let's say I hand someone my wallet and I say, all right, give me my American Express card, right? But by the way, return everything to the right of the card as well. Well, then you're not just returning the card, you're essentially returning the whole wallet along with the cash and the, the USCCA card. And this is basically how MongoBleed exploit works. A requester will ask for something from the database and then specify a chunk of memory to return. Now, MongoBleed is a nickname for CVE 2025-14847, uh, which is a MongoDB server vulnerability that can let an unauthenticated attacker remotely leak chunks of the database server's memory. And the, and the way it works is actually just, it's really brilliant. This, this doesn't mean it can leak your database records. Instead, it can leak like your process memory, credentials, session tokens, API keys, connection strings, stuff you really don't want outside the building. But here's how it works in plain English. If MongoDB is listening on the internet and you have compression enabled, an attacker can specify a crafted compressed message that MongoDB might accidentally hand back bits of memory that this user isn't authorized to see. And it's really no different than asking for one credit card and then handing back the entire wallet. So uh, this might sound abstract, but stay with me here. It's actually a very simple practical version. The attacker finds a MongoDB server exposed to the internet. And this isn't magic, this is regular port scanning that happens every day. Then they send mismatched length fields in their request. So they send like a small compressed message with a note that claims the response should be a large uncompressed size of data. The MongoDB server 
The actual server trusts the user provided length that it expects back and it creates this large buffer in memory to hold the decompressed data. The actual compressed data sent by the attacker is small. So when it's decompressed, it doesn't fill the whole allocated memory buffer. So the server hands back whatever was in that buffer. Now prepare yourself for a shock. When you open a program and then close the program again, that information doesn't get erased. It doesn't disappear. It just gets flagged as, hey, you can free this. You can overwrite this memory whenever you need more memory. So when the compressed data was sent and the database was told, hey, make a large buffer and return it, it returned whatever was in memory up to the length of that buffer. So sometimes that could be junk, right? Sometimes it could also be passwords or tokens or authorization material. If you do this attack enough, you're gonna get something back that's interesting. And once you've got a password or an admin token, you don't need MongoBleed anymore. You just log in like you belong there. So why is this a big deal? Well, there's a few reasons as to why this matters. Uh, number one, it's, it's unauthenticated and remotely triggerable. So that means it scales. It's reachable from the internet and basically anybody can try it. The second thing is that just because it's a memory leak doesn't mean it's low impact. People hear like, oh, information disclosure, and they think, oh, it's PII, personal identifiable information. Uh, we'll, we'll just get these guys life lock and we'll be done. No. If the memory contains credentials, that often leads like a straight line to full compromise, and there's some real world effects. Uh, the headline event that everyone's talking about are these reported breaches around uh, Ubisoft and Rainbow Six Siege which multiple outlets tied at least in part to MongoBleed exploitation. That reporting says attackers used to access things like manipulate bans, they injected chaos into live services, and then generally embarrass Ubisoft in public. Now, Ubisoft hasn't given the full, here's the entire kill chain breakdown in the public space, and, and frankly, they, they probably shouldn't do that. But the reason the story matters is that it demonstrates a pattern. Vulnerability leaks secrets, the secrets become access, the access becomes lateral movement, lateral movement becomes, I own your entire tooling now. So if you're not Ubisoft, you're a hospital, you're a city government, you're a small software as a service company, in this version of the story, it's not like two billion credits were allocated in Rainbow Six, your version is ransomware. So who should be worried? Well, you should care if you run a MongoDB server and it's reachable from networks you don't fully trust, and the internet counts, obviously, right? Uh, if you're using network compression and you're in the effective, uh, effective version range, uh, if you've got MongoDB sitting behind security that's really just wishful thinking, like a VPN, and yeah, I'm looking at you like, well, we whitelisted the office IP. Like, yeah, good luck with that. Um, offices have VPNs and VPN creds get fished and contractors exist with their creds on their laptop and, and somewhere a laptop has malware on it. So what do you do right now to stop the bleeding? Well, MongoDB has released patched versions and you should upgrade to a patch release for your major line. Um, public patches are below and actually I'll put it, I'll put it over here as well. If you can't patch immediately, uh, remove direct internet exposure. MongoDB should not be a public facing. Uh, restrict network access. Uh, read the firewall rules. It's probably not fine. Rotate your credentials and tokens because they plausibly could have been in memory. This is the annoying part, but it's also gonna be the necessary part. And look for scanning or weird compressed traffic targeting MongoDB ports. Uh, multiple security vendors have already pushed detection guidance because the exploitation is, they've, it's already been observed. And this is important. It, patching stops future bleeding. It doesn't unlock this. It doesn't unleak the secrets that were already lost. So if you were exposed during this period, treat every potential compromise, every potential uh, secret like a compromise and like do your incident response accordingly. So why does this keep happening? Well, it's because databases get treated like web apps. You know, a web app belongs on the internet. A database behind, uh, be needs to be behind that web app shouldn't be public facing. If your database is on the public internet, you're not cloud native, you're gonna, you're, you're about to learn about internet, uh, incident response. <laughs> That's the truth. And a lot of organizations, like nobody owns that risk end to end, like dev guys say it's ops, ops says it's dev, security says, we sent a PDF, why didn't you listen? And the attacker says, thanks for the tokens. Hey, uh, buy my books on Amazon, they're gonna, uh, 
Last Republic is available right now on, on Audible. Uh, Lies to Metal will be on Audible really soon. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the modern age of progress and preparedness, one thing separates the professional from the amateur. Appearance. That's why forward-thinking Americans choose Bunker Branding Apparel, the official uniform of those who get things done. Each shirt is precision engineered and field tested under rigorous conditions such as extended YouTube filming operations, Substack editorial duty, and the occasional internet argument. Designed for comfort, durability, and undeniable sense of tactical cool. So remember, citizens, when you're defending democracy, refueling freedom, or simply mowing the strategic lawn, Bunker Branding keeps you mission ready, wrinkle-free, and unmistakably American.